Hello students. So we have completed in our previous lecture the complete theory of chapter 8 motion. Now in this today's lecture, I am going to explain the answers and solutions to the questions on numericals given after topics in between the chapter. Now on page number 100, blue color three questions are given. Let us try to understand the solution or answer of first question. Now first question is, an object has moved through a distance. Can it have zero displacement? If yes, support your answer with an example. So in the question they have given that the object is in motion and obviously when it is in motion it has moved through certain distance. They are asking is it possible for an object to have zero displacement? Yes. Our answer should be yes. If yes, support your answer with an example. So we have written, even if they don't write in the physics, when we are supposed to write the answer in the form of yes or no, we should justify our answer. So yes, if a person moves through certain distance, he can have zero displacement. All of you know, I think so you must be knowing when, when or if his initial and final positions are same as shown in figure A. So we can draw this diagram. This is A is the initial position. A person moves from A towards B along the straight path and comes back along the straight, same straight path again to the A position. So if initial and final position are same, we can say that the person has zero displacement. Or we can also, you can also show this figure, circular figure, and you can say that a person moves along the circular path and he starts from A point and he completes one round or two rounds or three complete rounds. So in that case, when he completes three, four, five complete rounds, his initial and final position will be same. And again, in this case, displacement will be zero. And students, if it is asked for more marks, you can also write the definition of displacement. That displacement is the shortest distance between in each, from initial position to final position. And as in these examples, whichever example you give, Initial and final positions are same, so shortest distance between initial and final position is zero and so displacement is zero meter. I hope this answer is clear to you. Now let us proceed to the next numerical. Students here you remember we can show this, we can show this, we can show square, rectangular, any path. Only through arrows we have to show that initial and final positions are same. Now. Question 2. I am going to read the question 2. Solution will be doing it here. A farmer moves along the boundary of a square field of site 10 meters in 40 seconds. So what is given here? A farmer moves along the boundary of a square field of site 40 meter. What will be the magnitude of displacement of the farmer at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds. So we can write here to find, you can write magnitude of displacement at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds. And this is a question so you have to solve it. Okay, so first of all we will read the question and I, we have come to know that what is given, we will write what is given. A farmer moves along the boundary of a square field of side 40 meter. What we have to find? Displacement or you can write magnitude of displacement at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds. Now we can draw the rough diagram here. I have drawn a square here, square figure and I have given the letters name A, B, C, D to the square figure. So this is my square field. Okay, A is the initial position and using arrows I have shown that the farmer moves along this path A, B, C, D and so on. In this way he is moving. And since it is given that he covers this boundary in 40 seconds and side of this field is 10 meters. So obviously here we can write distance covered by farmer in 40 seconds is 40 meters. Remember it's not 10 meter. It's 40 meter. Uh, sorry students their side is 10 meter not 40 meter. Side is 10 meter. Okay, so distance covered by farmer in 40 seconds is 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 
that is 40 meters. What is distance covered? S 40 meter, time taken 40 seconds. So average speed will be distance upon time, total distance upon time. And total distance covered if we consider for one round, it is 40 meter divided by 40 second and that is 1 meter per second. So students, average speed was found to be 1 meter per second. Now we have to find that what is the displacement at the end of time, 2 minutes 20 seconds. So I have denoted time by T1. So when T1 is 2 minutes 20 seconds, what is the magnitude of displacement? Let us denote it by S1. Now first of all, I have converted this time into SI unit there or into seconds. 2 minutes means 2 into 60 seconds and plus 20 seconds. So this T1 time now becomes 140 seconds. Now we know the formula here for speed or average speed we can write. Well, let us assume the speed remains constant, then we can just use the word speed also. So speed or average speed here is equal to S1 upon T1. Therefore, S1 is V into T1. V, we had calculated it to be 1 meter per second. So V is 1 meter per second and time is 140 seconds. So displacement here, distance covered in this time is 140 meter. This S1 is a distance covered, not displacement covered. We have to find the displacement magnitude. Okay. So let us see how we'll do it. Now we can proceed in different ways. One of the method I have written here. 140 meter, this 10 meter. So this one boundary will be equal to length of one boundary is equal to 40 meter. So we can say length of the boundary of this field is 40 meter means 40 meter is equal to one round. So 140 meter is equal to how many rounds? Using simple maths again I can find 140 into 1 divided by 40. So I have written here a number of rounds completed in this time will be 140 divided by 40 that is 7 by 2 that is 3.5 rounds. So the farmer completes 3.5 rounds, that is 3.5 rounds. It means a farmer moves first this, completes one round, then again moves along this path and completes a second round and reaches A. Again moves along this round and reaches A, completing third round. Three and half round means half round more. So he will move along this path AB and BC. Now half round is completed. It means after completing three and half rounds in this time 140 second farmer will be at finally at C point C position. So final position of the farmer is point C or corner C of the field. So what will be the magnitude of displacement? Magnitude of displacement will be AC length AC okay so magnitude of displacement is length AC this diagonal okay and that is equal to using simple Pythagoras theorem I can find out that is equal to length AC is equal to so use the Pythagoras theorem here this is 10 meter this is 10 meter so hypotenuse will be 10 square plus 10 square under root of that so Length AC is equal to under root of 10 square plus 10 square is equal to under root of 100 plus 100 that is under root of 200. Split 200 into 2 into 100 and 100 square root can be taken out that is 10. So finally magnitude of displacement is 10 under root 2 meters. Okay. If you have time then you can find out the square root of 2 and proceed. If no time is there we can just leave the answer till here. Okay, so this is one of the methods by finding the average speed or you can also simply do that the farmer completes, starts from A, completes one round in 40 seconds, complete the second round in 80 seconds and in 120 seconds he completes the third round and reaches B. In 130 seconds, he reaches B. In 140 seconds, he reaches C. 
So final position is C. You can also just explain in words like that if you want. And then we can proceed in this manner. Final position is point C. So magnitude of displacement is length of AC as we have shown here. Now the third question is which of the following is true for displacement? I have written the question in short here as it is uh, not, uh, it's not useful to write the entire question here as I'm reading the question. Which of the following is true for displacement? These two sentences are given. Displacement cannot be zero. This is one of the sentences. And second is its magnitude is greater than the distance traveled by the object. We have to just say which of the following is true for displacement. Let us see now. First, displacement cannot be zero. We have just seen in the first numerical and otherwise also we have learned it before that displacement for a moving body can be zero when initial and final positions are same. It means this is false. So first is false because displacement can be zero. We know that. Second, its magnitude. Here it means displacement only. Displacement's magnitude is greater than the distance traveled by the object. Students, we have seen before that whenever a body is in motion, in that case, distance is always greater than the magnitude of displacement. Or in other words, magnitude of displacement is always less than the distance traveled. In only one case, magnitude of displacement is equal to distance. That is when the body is moving along a straight path. Because when a body moves along a straight path, magnitude of displacement and distance are same. In all other cases, the displacement's magnitude will be lesser than the distance traveled. So this again is false. So both the sentences are false here. They are not true. So we can write false for this answers. Now students, page number 102, there are few more questions given. First question is, distinguish between speed and velocity, which we have already done. Second is, under what conditions is the magnitude of average velocity of an object equal to its average speed? Okay, so hope you know the answer that we know that average velocity will be equal to average speed only when total distance is equal to total displacement covered. And that is possible only when the body moves along a straight path without reversing back, without turning, without changing the direction. So as I have shown here that if a body moves along the straight path from A towards B, in this case when a body moves along the straight path, then only we know the distance covered is AB, length AB and magnitude of displacement is also length AB by definition shortest distance from initial to final position. So both are same and average speed is total distance upon total time. Average velocity is total displacement upon total time as when a body moves along a straight path, total distance and magnitude of displacement are same. So we can write average speed and magnitude of average velocity are also same. So this is sentence is the actually real answer that is when a body moves along a straight path. And remember without changing the direction you can draw the diagram also. Our third question on this page is what does the distance of an auto what does the odometer of an automobile measure? We all know the answer it is a distance traveled by the vehicle or distance traveled by the automobile. Next fourth question is what does the path of an object look like when it is in uniform motion? Now when a body is in uniform motion we know that it covers equal distances in equal intervals of time. So that is the condition direction is not important here. So you can write the path of an object can be straight, it can be curved, it can be zigzag, okay. The path can be straight, curved or zigzag when it is in uniform motion because direction is not important here. During, next question, during an experiment, 
So fifth question, I'll repeat it. I'll start it now. During an experiment, a signal from a spaceship reached the ground station in five minutes. What was the distance of the spaceship from the ground station? The signal travels at the speed of light that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Now, during an experiment, a signal from a spaceship reached the ground station in 5 minutes. So first of all, we should write what is given using symbols preferably. Time t is 5 minutes. Minutes, I will convert it into seconds. So it is equal to 5 into 60 seconds. That is 300 seconds. Time is 300 seconds. What was the distance of the spaceship from the ground station? So here I have written distance of the spaceship from the ground S is equal to question mark. This you have to find. If the signal travels at the speed of light that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. So speed which is denoted by V here for the signal is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Now, what we have to do is we have to think about the formula which we can use here. This is a very simple numerical. V is S upon T. Speed is distance upon time. So, just put the value of V, 3 into 10 raised to 8, time 300. Distance we have denoted by S. So, we can do the simplification and get the value of S as 3 into 300, that is 900 into 10 raised to 8 and in a better way, I can write it as 9 into 10 raised to 10 meters. Remember, in scientific notation, whenever the number is very big or very small, we try to keep this first number less than 10. Okay, uh, we try to keep it less than 10 and more than 0 point something. And it should be into 10 in this manner. It should be written in this manner in the parts of 10 when the number is very big. We'll consider this in detail in the upcoming videos. Thank you. So I hope you have understood the lecture. You have understood these simple numericals. Okay. We'll proceed from simple to difficult numericals in our next lectures. Thanks.